This is Valley News Live at 4. Happy Friday, everyone. Here's a look at today's top four at four. Police have identified the man killed in a train crash in Ottertail County. It happened yesterday just before nine in the morning. Authorities found a badly damaged Dodge pickup truck and Joseph Mack, who passed away. No word on what caused the crash, but Mack's family tells Valley News Live they think the lack of safety precautions at the railway is to blame. They don't think this would have happened if the crossing had cross arms. Police in Becker County need your help finding a burglary suspect. The sheriff's office says the incident happened in the early morning hours on January 31st in Audubon, Minnesota. If you know who this is, call the Becker County Sheriff's Office at the number on your screen. In Grand Forks, police are reporting an uptick in car thefts. Officers took 42 incident reports in January. They want to remind you to lock your doors and take any valuables with you when you leave your vehicle. And if you notice anything suspicious, call police. Legendary actor Christopher Plummer died today at the age of 91. Plummer rose to fame with his portrayal of Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music. When he won an Oscar in 2012 for Beginners, he became the oldest Academy Award acting winner in history. He also won two Tony Awards. Plummer's manager says he died with his wife by his side in their Connecticut home. Now here's a first look at our weather with Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hutch. Stacy, thanks so much. We're going to start right out with a simple checklist of things we want you to keep in mind as we go through a dangerous cold snap that'll last well into next week. Uh, first and foremost, want to keep your eyes on um, routinely throughout the upcoming week or so on your furnace vent. Watch for ice buildup on that. That's the exhaust vent, vent uh, where that uh, CO2 gas exits. You don't want that building up in the house. Check on your neighbors, pets and livestock and survival kits a must as we've been talking about throughout the week. Take a look at this. First and foremost, this is your Saturday morning forecast. The black colors here illustrate wind chills close to that 50 below category, maybe even a little colder along the international border. Then, well, Sunday morning, no picnic there either. Plenty of us seeing those deadly wind chills where frostbite can set in within 10 minutes and it starts to retreat only a little as we go into Monday. Take a look at what we have going on right now with temperatures up in Canada that are down to 40 below in the Baker Lake area, but look at with the winds what's going on there. This might be with the new wind chill formula, the coldest wind chill I've seen in some time. It feels like 78 below zero right now in Baker Lake, 51 below in Churchill. And while we won't see 70s below, it will be plenty dangerously cold right now. A few flurries out there and we're keeping our eyes on visibility as a result of the blowing snow. It's reduced in the Grand Forks area just a little bit and here in Fargo with low clouds as well. Right now, our wind chills are dangerous, but not as cold as they will be. I will have hour by hour details in your forecast here, Stacy, in just a few minutes on how low we go, not only tonight, but through the weekend. And we'll talk a little bit about how long this cold air looks to be sticking around. Thanks, Hutch. 78 below. Just unbelievable. Holy moly. Yeah. Makes you grateful for our like 20 below. <laughs> Stay inside. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Hutch. Super Bowl festivities will look different this year as a result of the pandemic, but the CDC says there are ways you can watch the big game safely. The safest way to watch the Chiefs take on the Buccaneers is to do it with the people you live with or attend a virtual gathering. But if you do attend or host a gathering with people who you don't live with, health experts recommend masking up, social distancing as much as you can, and sticking with a small group. Police in the Fargo-Moorhead area say they won't be actively looking for capacity violations on Super Bowl Sunday, but that doesn't mean they're turning a blind eye. In North Dakota, bars and restaurants can now operate at 80% capacity. Fargo police say their officers will enter a bar or restaurant that looks to be over capacity, but only if they have time and aren't needed on other calls. They say officers are continuing to do weekly bar checks in the city. West Fargo police say there isn't a penalty for noncompliance. In Minnesota, bars and restaurants are at 50% capacity, but with some more restrictions. They also have a 10 p.m. curfew and must keep tables spaced six feet apart. Moorhead police say officers won't be actively looking for bars that are breaking the rules, but they are taking complaints and forwarding them to the Minnesota Attorney General's office. Moorhead police say they hope the local bars and restaurant owners continue to do the right thing this Super Bowl weekend. The CDC has released a new app to track COVID-19 side effects and help you remember when to get your shot. Valley News Team's Brian Sherrod has the details. VSafe is the name of this app, and it's a smartphone-based tool that uses text messaging and web surveys to provide personalized health check-ins after you receive a COVID-19 vaccine. 
Now, depending on the answers you put in, someone from the CDC may call you directly to check up on you and get more information. VSAFE cannot schedule your vaccine appointments, including second doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. If you need to schedule, reschedule, or cancel a COVID-19 vaccination appointment, contact the place that set up your appointment or the vaccine provider in your area. For example, this could be your state or local health department, employer, or vaccine provider. Now to download VSAFE, head over to vsafe.cdc.gov. Read the on-screen instructions and click Get Started. Now, if you complete your registration before 2 in the afternoon, VSAFE will start your initial health care check-in around 2 in the afternoon the same day. And if you register after 2 in the afternoon, VSAFE will start your initial health check-in immediately after you register. Brian Sherrod, Valley News Live. When you receive a VSAFE check-in text, click the link. Links will expire at 11.59 p.m. on the day you receive them. House and Senate Democrats are moving ahead with separate budget bills, which will allow them to pass President Biden's nearly $2 trillion coronavirus relief package with or without Republican support. Natalie Brand is at the White House where the president is pushing his recovery plan. Thank you for your patience. President Biden says the weaker than expected January jobs report is another sign Congress needs to pass COVID relief as soon as possible. I see enormous pain in this country. A lot of folks trying to figure out how to keep their jobs and take care of their children. A lot of folks reaching the breaking point. The president met with House Democratic leaders at the White House Friday morning to discuss the next steps for his $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package. We hope to be able to put vaccines in people's arms, money in people's pockets, children in safely in schools, and, and uh, workers in their jobs. This follows an all night votorama with senators proposing dozens of amendments to the budget resolution. I would urge the adoption of my amendment. The resolution passed early Friday morning with Vice President Kamala Harris needed to break the party line vote. The vice president votes in the affirmative and the concurrent resolution as amended is adopted. House and Senate negotiators will now work on a final bill in committees which Democrats could pass without Republican support. Democrats hope to finish drafting the measure in the next two to three weeks so President Biden could sign it before current federal unemployment benefits expire in mid-March. Senate Republicans accuse Democrats of ignoring their $600 billion counterproposal, which offered more targeted relief. We need to give our economy its best shot at recovering to to pre-pandemic levels. President Biden has signaled he's willing to compromise on who is eligible to receive stimulus checks. His current plan would give individuals earning up to $50,000 a $1,400 check. Couples making 100 grand a year would get $2,800. Natalie Brand, CBS News, The White House. In addition to the economic relief in the plan, the package includes $20 billion for a national COVID vaccination program, $50 billion for additional testing, and $170 billion to help schools safely reopen. If you're traveling and don't mask up, you'll now have to pay up. The TSA is recommending fining people who violate the recently released federal transportation face mask requirement. The first offense will cost $250. Repeat offenders can pay up to $1,500. The requirement says travelers using any public transportation must wear a mask, and it will remain effective until at least May 11th. If you're looking to stay on top of the latest COVID vaccine information, get our new VNL vaccine tracker. You can access national and local resources in just two steps. Open your phone's camera, point it at the QR code on your screen, then tap the link that pops up. North Dakota U.S. Senator John Hovind wants another six years in Washington. He's seeking re-election to his third term. He was first elected in 2010 after Byron Dorgan retired. Prior to that, he served as North Dakota governor. Hovind is a member of the Senate Agriculture, Appropriations, Energy, and Indian Affairs Committees. Well, that Arctic blast is making its way to us, and while many of us will spend the night inside bundled up, some of our local law enforcement will be sleeping outside. Valley News team's Courtney Lockie is braving the cold with them and joins us to explain why. Courtney? 
Thanks, Stacy. We have breaking news. It's freezing out here and we're just getting started, but it's all for a good cause. Now, Cass County Sheriff Jesse John are along with Clay County Sheriff Mark Emding are teaming up to bring awareness to the homelessness population as well as preventing suicide for veterans. Now, in doing so, they're going to be spending the night outside of the Moorhead American Legion in a tent. They'll be braving the cold temperatures out here for just one night, but the event will go through Sunday at noon. That means you have 44 hours to donate. Those 44 hours represent the 22 veterans who commit suicide each day, and the sleeping outside represents the numbing truth that many of our homeless people face each day. Now, you can swing by any time to donate or to visit, but right now our sheriffs are back home getting geared up for the night, and when they come back, we'll be talking with them at 6. Live in Moorhead, Courtney Lockie, Fountain News Live. Thanks so much, Courtney. Now they're looking for a variety of things, cash or food or winter clothing donations. You can swing by the Moorhead American Legion anytime through the weekend to drop off those items. Well, if the Chiefs or the Bucks aren't your thing, how about Team Rough and Team Fluff? These very good boys and girls are ready to kick off their own Super Bowl show on Discovery. The Puppy Bowl has been a fan favorite since 2005, featuring shelter dogs hoping to score with forever families. The pandemic has led to a boost in pooch adoptions, and this year several disabled dogs will be featured. The message is don't judge a dog by its looks. And for all you cat lovers, the Kitty Halftime Show will be back full of felines that also need homes. Coming up on Valley News Live at 4, a new type of COVID test will show you where they're now testing people with a breathalyzer. Pedro, my rescue pup, reminds you to get those hats and gloves out. A cold stretch of weather is ahead. How low will we go? Hour by hour details on dangerous wind chills throughout the weekend and beyond next. Ooh, Baker Lake. Unbelievable. Details are 